everybody knows uh, DNA double helix, and uh, everybody knows that it is the molecule uh, of heredity which uh, is carries genetic information in all living things and all living organisms. It is double helix, and uh, uh, so it it consists of two strands, and uh, each strand is uh, c uh, consists of backbone, uh, so-called sugar phosphate backbone, and bases, ATGC, famous uh, uh, for bases, and uh, uh, in double helix A is paired with T, and uh, G is paired with C. And they form this uh, ladder, and it is also helix. And the question which uh, interested me for very many years is, and not only me, of course, some other uh, researchers, is uh, how this, uh, obviously, one of the reasons why DNA is double helix, why it is so, uh, 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 so uh, useful structure uh, for, uh, uh, from the viewpoint of nature, is that uh, bases uh, are buried, buried within the double helix, so they are really can, uh, very poorly accessible for any damage uh, which can be inflicted. And in principle, if you look at the structure, they are almost not accessible uh, for, uh, very poorly accessible for outside agents. And there are many dangerous, of course, chemicals around. And one chemical which uh, everybody knows about uh, in this respect is formaldehyde. Formaldehyde, people use formalin to fix uh, all kinds of organs and so forth. So it is very reactive substance. Many years ago, we studied uh, how formaldehyde interact with DNA, and we found that if you apply, for, uh, if you add formaldehyde into DNA solution uh, with enough concentration for a while, uh, after a while, we will find that strands are separated. It is not double helix any longer. So chemicals can ruin the double helical structure and modify uh, bases and so change heredity. And this, of course, is one of, maybe, one of the sources of mutagenesis and all kinds of uh, damages. The question is how it happens uh, in, with double-stranded DNA. How double-stranded DNA becomes ruined or modified by these chemicals. And uh, we uh, assumed that the reason for this is that uh, in, as any microscopic object, DNA experiences thermal motion, thermal fluctuation, and this thermal fluctuation uh, may manifest themselves with occasional base pair opening. So uh, they are open, and when they are open, chemical can react with, with the groups which are otherwise within the double helix and are not accessible for this chemical. And so this, uh, the DNA breathing concept emerged, that DNA breathes, and because this breathing may be very important to understand chemical reactivity of DNA and mutagenesis and cancerogenesis and so forth and so forth. And so we studied this and uh, we arrived at the conclusion after pretty complicated biophysical studies of this that this base pair op opening really can happen and they can happen with very low probability. But still it explains it explains essentially how formaldehyde reacts with DNA. And this probability, which we estimated, uh, we actually were the first uh, who arrived at uh, right estimation of this probability of base pairs opening. It is 10 to minus 5. So on average, if you go along DNA, every, on average, every 100,000th base pair is open. It, it, it's very, it's very, very uh, rare event. 
still it explains the uh, reactivity of uh, DNA. People who do uh, study DNA using uh, ANAMAR, nuclear, magnet nuclear magnetic resonance, they found the way to determine the same parameters, the DNA breathing probability, using ANAMAR, much more direct approach than our approach based on chemical modification of DNA bioformaldehyde. And uh, they arrived at absolutely the same figure, that it is 10 to minus 5, the probability of base pairs opening. So uh, situation uh, um, uh, seems uh, pretty clear, but one uh, one thing remained unexplained in in our uh, uh, study of DNA reaction with formaldehyde. To explain fully experimental data with uh, by our theoretical model, we we developed to uh, describe the process of DNA. Uh, unwinding by formaldehyde was necessary to assume that in addition to this main base pairing opening process, there was some mysterious, less, more probable, but le less substantial uh, breathing, like it was deep breathing and it was small breathing, which uh, was we had to assume that it was more probable, but less extensive. It is not just opening. It was something less than that. And we did, not, did, did, and we did no idea what could it be. And then, uh, very recently, a group uh, at uh, University of Michigan, headed by uh, Hashim El Hashimi, a young, uh, very bright scientist, they uh, discovered a new mode of breathing of DNA using uh, nuclear magnetic resonance. But if uh, to study deep breathing, uh, uh, proton uh, anamar was used to for study this uh, second mode of uh, DNA fluctuations. Uh, carbon uh, magnetic resonance were, uh, was used. And they uh, discovered that in normal double helix, not every base pair is in Watson Creek pairing. So we, we uh, since uh, Watson and Creek uh, paper of 1953, we believe that uh, all base pairs are Watson Creek base pairs. But actually, in early 1960s, uh, X-ray crystallographer named Hookstein, he discovered in just in crystals of bases, uh, no relation to real DNA, just studied crystals of DNA bases. He found that another base pairing mode, in principle, is possible for a base pair. It is called Hookstein pairing because of him. And if in, in Watson Creek pairing, you can consider base pair uh, uh, as kissing each other, uh, just mouse to mouse, in uh, Hookstein pairing, it is one base kisses to other base into the cheek. So it is this kind of, of uh, 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 base pairing. And what Al Hashimi found that approximately every hundredth base pair in normal double helix is not in Watson Creek form, but in Hookstein form. So this fluctuation happens all the time. And on average, we have in our DNA, in any other organism's DNA, not Watson Creek base pairs like 1% of base pairs, which is huge, actually. If you, if you say we, we have our DNA in each our cell, it, it consists of actually s uh, 6 billion uh, base pairs. So uh, from the 6 billion base pair, 1% uh, is huge, huge amount of uh, base pairs are actually hooked in. And uh, then we did uh, here at Boston University with um, a group uh, of my colleagues uh, here, 
uh, Shandar Vajda and Dima Kazakov who uh, have, uh, make c uh, computer approaches to analyze interaction of small molecule with biological molecule, proteins and nucleic acid, we found that if you assume first that DNA is all DNA base pairs are watson click base pairs, then formaldehyde cannot react with uh, base without base pair opening, so without fluctuation. So just in normal uh, watson Creek double helix, uh, uh, with watson Creek base pairs, bases are not, uh, cannot be attacked by formaldehyde. So formaldehyde really needs fluctuation to attack uh, DNA. But uh, not necessarily full base pair opening uh, required, because we found that if uh, with this uh, computer uh, simulations that if we have hooksin pair formed instead of Watson, in adjacent watson click base pair, the base, bec uh, the reactive group in the base becomes accessible to formaldehyde. So the mystery which existed for 25 years, how, what is this mysterious second s smaller but uh, 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 le uh, m more probable fluctuation because, as I said, Hookstein fluctuation is much, much like thousand times more, more uh, probable than full base pair opening. And this uh, 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 fluctuation leads to reaction of formaldehyde with base uh, without full base pairs opening. So it is somehow the uh, finalizes picture how it happens. And it is in, extremely important. Before recently, formaldehyde was considered, of course, as hazardous agent, and it is a cancerogen, mutagen, everything is known. But it was considered as external hazardous agent. What we learned very recently, it was shown that formaldehyde is actually produced in all eukaryotic cells during normal process of uh, chromatin remodeling and uh, uh, chemical modification of chromatin. So one of the most important process which happens with chromosomes is that uh, histone proteins which form uh, chromosome uh, if, uh, uh, together with DNA, they are chemically modified, they are methylated. And in addition to methylation, when it's necessary, they are demethylated. So if they're methylated, so sometimes they, in these enzymes which demethylate them, by just pure chemistry, they, as by, by product, they produce formaldehyde. So formaldehyde is actually produced in any, in every, uh, eukaryotic cell in nucleus of any eukaryotic cell produced all the time. So we have formaldehyde and it was shown that if you, you if you and there are of course special enzyme which digest this formaldehyde but if you have mutation which makes this enzyme not effective then it is actually lethal for the cell because cell uh, is an enormous uh, modification by formaldehyde is accumulated and cell dies. So we now see that this um, uh, fluctuation play a very important role to, uh, 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 for re reactivity of DNA with respect of agent which always present in at least eukaryotic cell. It's not the true for uh, bacteria, but in, in our cells, in humans, it is it produced all the time.